Hello all and welcome to DevNet Create 2020 uh, event, which is very important as a presenter and as an audience to attend, to learn and code different things. My name is Vicky Daliwala and I'm a full stack architect and software developer with Cisco Systems. Today, I'm going to take you through a journey of a very famous keyword cloud computing and the automated way of resource provisioning within them and what is the importance of that. So I am a part of uh, application performance management team within Cisco IT. My main responsibilities are to design and develop the self-service utilities and uh, to provide a software cadence for the application's portfolio. I am having a 12 years of experience working in various programming languages and on multiple platforms. Um, I would like I'm, what, the things which really excites me is to design an application which is very user friendly, which is loved by customers and which provides minimal support and maintenance from the developers team. So let's quickly jump into uh, what is resource provisioning in the cloud computing? Why it is so important? And then uh, I will go through an example uh, application. So when uh, the applications is deployed in cloud computing, uh, the most important thing is um, that the resources should be provisioned on demand as it is uh, network oriented, we should have a convenient network access to the different shared pools of configurable resources such as CPUs, RAMs, storage. We have to make sure that those are available to the clients on demand. When the applications get deployed on the cloud, we have to make sure that it is a guaranteed performance. So, And to get that, we need to select, we need to deploy, we need to pick up those elements of software and hardware resources, which can give us a 100% performance of their applications. Uh, the different techniques of resource provisioning are uh, static allocation. Uh, so in static allocation is like when clients, they have their fixed requirements and they do not change. So they go ahead and pay for specific amount and they acquire the resources and perform uh, their services. Dynamic allocation is like paper usage when the requirements frequently change of customers and they go ahead and start paying uh, for the resources as they start using them. Cloud self-service is like customers, they will go and rent the resources which are provided by the, by the specific service provider. They pay a specific amount, rent them. Once they are done, they deallocate them. The, the most important things while doing the resource provision, we have to make sure that the quality of the services is maintained. Uh, so availability of the applications, the application should be reliable, secure information, the data needs to be passed between different microservices. The response time, the performance of the application should be at very high notch when it is uh, deployed at multiple data centers. And at the same time, it should be cost effective. So this, this is the resource provisioning, and then I will be taking you up through um, uh, an application and then through our challenges and how we resolve them. So we, as an application performance team, we provide load testing as a service, a platform to the clients so that they can perform load testing. What is load testing for them? They can um, measure their system's performance under the real life load conditions. They can... Uh, Bump these resources, they can bomb the application with 1,000 resources, 5,000, 20,000 resources, and try to see how their system behaves. It is complete self service. So they can execute the load test, the scripts which are written, um, and execute them from the new load. And SOAP UI has a different tools which we provide them. Uh, to do this, they have to procure resources. They have to procure the VMs on OpenStack platform. Once they procure them, they can go ahead and start doing load testing. And all these different modules within load testing, they, in, they interact with each other through the RESTful APIs framework. So basically we provide an entire platform uh, as a service to the client. So it's passed as a platform as a service which utilizing the API, API driven cloud infrastructure. Uh, now, uh, moving a little deep into that, that when we provide this load testing as a service to clients, what is that? So we have a cloud infrastructure uh, manager. So a customer goes there as a first step. They create the groups to manage the resources and authorize it to uh, utilize that resources. They secure funds, they create tenants. Once that is done, the second point is very important where they 
go ahead and they have to procure the VMs to do the uh, load testing. So they utilize in UI select uh, different flavors based on how much load they need. And we execute the RESTful APIs to procure the resources. Once that is done, they move to the third step where uh, they write the scripts, they execute the scripts uh, on the new load SOAP UI. Once they get them, uh, they review the uh, performance reports. And based on that, they can make their decision about updating their applications. Once they are done, either they have an option to update it to the more users, degrade it, or they can decommission the resources. They want to just use the paper usage model, and then we execute our RESTful APIs. Now, I would like to diverge more into step number two. When we are procuring the resources, what are the challenges uh, we faced? And to understand that, uh, I will quickly go over the life cycle of the procurement of resources. So user logs into UI, request uh, the service. When that is done, the, this request, it flows through the web server and identification platform. Once that gets identified, the data gets persisted in the database. Once that is done, asynchronous processing of uh, this request is done by executing the shell scripts. And the shell scripts, underlying the shell scripts, uh, executes the Terraform commands. Uh, the Terraform commands goes and procure the VMs in the OpenStack platform. And this is now this part is very important where we try to procure the VMs, but it fails. What happens if it fails? What are the challenges? We will go over the next slide to understand the challenges which we face uh, while procuring these resources and how we overcame it. In the entire process of this, it was a manual process. So what were the limitations which we faced in this, menu, in, in this uh, procurement of resources? So user experience, uh, and service provider experience. So I have divided into two parts. Let's first quickly go through the user experience. So as this is completely on the cloud, the temporary service interruptions are bound to happen, like the database, connections can do, go down, network issues, uh, external services issues, anything can come up. Transition faults, how can system can recover quickly from the transition faults? There were manual intervention to get the resolution. Customers have to see the error messages on, on UI, which is very bad customer experience. They need to go ahead and retry manually. So all these were user experience, which were not giving like good ratings to the application. From the service provider, it was unnecessary load on our system. The resources were stale. Some of the half-baked resources, we were not able to utilize the resources at 100% of strength. The resolution time was more than 24 hours. If something goes wrong in the quota, we used to create case. We as we used to depend on the um, the platform teams. We used to resolve. We used to create tickets, and they used to resolve them. It used to take 24 hours for the resources. In this world, they should immediately get it within a couple of minutes. So we have. It was very hard to meet the QoS, the quality of service, and SLA time. So we thought like we need to come and come up with a completely automated policy. But it is not only automated. We want to have to be smart policy. How if the if a request comes to procure the resources and we did, if it fails, then our system should be smart enough, intelligent enough to recover, but at the same time, make sure that those requests are not lost and uh, it will be a seamless client experience to provide them the resources. So. The challenge is what we try to solve here was uh, the seamless procurement of resources, hide all the exceptions from the users. Users For users, it will be completely like a okay, fantastic ex experience, even though the microservice on the backend fails, which we try to uh, fix them. Uh, fault identification and proactive findings, those were the two main things which we focused. We divided into platform buckets. We did proactive findings so that even before the system goes into error state, we identify and resolve them. A complete self-sufficient system. To, in order to achieve that, we, uh, we went through multiple solutions, but then we came up with our uh, homegrown solution so that we can follow the best practices like fully automated, flexible NoSQL design from the traditional relational database design. We kept error buckets. We also had the fallback options. Uh, we utilized the email uh, utility for sending the notifications, like 75% of quota has been exhausted. Make sure that you increase the quota before uh, the user requests the, um, with the more quota. Uh, 
minimal downtime. We were at we achieved like 99.997 uptime of the system during uh, this and after implementation. This for the first six months, uh, it has been now 10 months. So uh, it was a great achievement for the team. Uh, as I mentioned, we. To achieve this, we divided into probable faults. So we came up with a platform buckets like quota exhaustion, platform issues, connection failures, database issues, authorization, ping identity issues, and all uh, that help us to pinpoint a specific error and resolve them. And to in order to achieve this, we came up with a design flow. We took a variant of the very famous circuit breaker design pattern and we created a message queue so that none of the requests uh, are lost, they are saved. We went with the retry frequency config parameters. So if the amount of frequency of retry changes, then there should not be any downtime. We should be immediately able to do it dynamically runtime. We executed the cron job to go ahead and retry this request behind the scenes so that customers are uh, do not get that bad experience. Um, so uh, quickly, I will show you uh, like what was the uh, architecture diagram behind this. So we utilize an OpenStack platform through which we procure the VMs for the clients. So once the request comes from the user, it goes to the basic request validation. It goes, once it passes, it goes to the data gets persisted in the database. And from there, it goes to the provisioning mechanism. Once, as I mentioned, we did, we did have a cell scripts. So once the cell scripts are executed and Terraform's commands are uh, executed, they fall under the buckets, the error buckets. So if a user request fall under any error buckets, we mark them as the retry candidate. And what does this retry candidate means is we have a scheduled cron job which runs every uh, which runs every 15 minutes and it will it will look for any retry candidates and it will try to execute the scripts and make sure that it is successful provision and we do this retry like every 15 minutes for one hour if the retry has been done for four times and if it's still not uh, provision then we mark them as a failure so this really help us to achieve a retry automated mechanism um, within the within the entire self-service utility. What benefits we achieved uh, while, while uh, after going through this smart and automated retry mechanism from the user experience, they had minimal errors. They don't see any error on their screen. It was seamless procurement for them. They didn't have to manually do retry, no manual intervention, everything was automated. And we also used to persist the existing VMs for them if there is failure. As a product team, we found it very helpful because we implemented a preventive monitoring. We got a data about, okay, what is the historical uh, failures, what we got, zero downtime. Uh, instrumentation was achieved. And the most important thing was mini minimize the customer cases, the production issues. Mostly it were like one or two in the entire six months and not even P1, which we were able to resolve them. 100% of re resource utilization, we got uh, in increased predictability of like how many is going to utilize in this quarter. We did an automatic cleanup of the stale VMs. So the system, system was very clean, database was pretty clean, a excellent cost-effective system. And the, finally, we were able to achieve the self-sufficient system, what we had goal, that we want to remove everything manual and keep it automated. Intelligent provisioning was added, high speed and high availability of the system. So this was our experience of moving from manual to automated retry mechanism. Uh, I'm hopeful that you also can go through that and make it as a priority. So um, hope uh, this will help you in designing your applications in cloud computing. Thank you.